What a Guys, I had a really fun weekend. Well, I guess Taylor was there too. So my boyfriend and I, and then Taylor and his wife went on a double date, which is really cool. Really fancy, expensive place. It was crazy. It was, was probably that? the most expensive place in town. Really? Yeah. yeah. A classy dude. Yeah. Where, where'd you guys go? Uh, I don't know. It's like a, it's, you know, uh, as classy as it is, it's pretty convenient. Uh, you know, uh, we, we went there, we sort of just pulled up and it was sort of like this self-serve place, if you oh, will. I love those But, but it was, places. it was refined. What they had to offer was really refined and mm -hmm. uh, they even had premium options. Premium? Yeah. Wow. What was yeah. the owner like? Nice guy. Nice guy. Yeah. Didn't talk yeah. to him. He kind of had an accent, but... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. What kind of accent? I don't know. Just, you know. I don't recall. He just sort of stayed behind the counter and we all just did our thing. And at the end, it was just like super expensive, but it was, mm -hmm. it was really nice. Like I said, super convenient. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd love to check it out. What, what? Oh yeah. I'll show that? you. What's it called? Here it is. Yeah. Here's a picture. It's, a, it's called oh, a 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven. <laughs> Very it's fancy. how you pronounce Very it. Very high end. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I saw a girl who got her bill and she just cried. So, <laughs> I mean. I bet it's a very premium place. Yeah. yeah. I would love to go there <laughs> if I could afford it. I don't know if I could afford it on the premium salary. Yeah. And scene, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, wow, yes, the acting was fantastic. It does deserve a round of applause. Welcome to Will and Amla Live. It's good to see you. How was your guys' weekend? Write down in the comments below. What was the biggest thing that you did this weekend? Uh, the biggest thing of my weekend was that bill from 7-Eleven. So. It's true. Any, any, anybody else, Will, anything to share from? Um. No, I had a great weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> had a wonderful, and I went Good. to the zoo. Oh, nice. It's fantastic. Zoos are fun. Zoos the best. I love the zoo. Mm. Seeing all the the, the deer in, and the vocals, and... Wow. Yeah. You want to explain what you just That's said? That's animals and birds. Wow. Yes. Animals and, and birds. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> two different things. Two different things. Or two. Two different things. <laughs> two different things. <laughs> so, yeah. I saw Taylor, Taylor, anything fun this weekend? Uh, I, it's a pretty typical weekend. We went to the movies mm -hmm. on, uh, on Saturday. I saw the new Batman. All right. All right. Hot take some time and then, uh, played volleyball on Sunday. Yeah, that's fantastic. Look, guys, you might notice we're not on the Will and Amla live channel. Taylor, do you want to explain why exactly we are not on our new and improved channel? Big tech censorship. Oh, ah, uh, no, we, uh, we streamed a video Friday, um, a reaction to this Jubilee video. You guys can still watch that maybe for a limited time. It's, a, yep. it's, on, it's on the website still at least. But uh, we, they, they took down our, our live stream and then banned our channel for an entire week uh, because we violated some policy. So we've appealed, um, not clear exactly what the violation was. We asked them to specify there are plenty of other channels that do reaction videos to Jubilee videos specifically right. and do it in the same way that we did. So it, I don't, I don't want to cry censorship, but it certainly appears that we, there's some sort of unfair, um, uh, penalty given right. to us. But uh, anyways, that's why we're not on the new Will and Amma live channel. So you should still subscribe to it. We're going to be back there in a week. Uh, it'll have some strikes against it, yep. but hopefully we get those cleared up. And uh, you know, you guys, if you have your connections at YouTube, let us know. Yeah. I wasn't even there on Friday. So I for know. the first time, it's Will, not it was my not fault. Will's fault. Yeah, first yeah. time. First time. Yeah. Very happy and self-satisfied. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, first yeah. time ever. You can go. I go away for one day, guys. And you all get banned. We all get banned for a week. We are in conservative time out. Fantastic. Well, last week, a friend of the show came by. His name is Dave Rubin. I got to do a fun little interview with him where I asked him, I think, I think it was 20 questions. I didn't end up counting in the end, but we got to know Dave Rubin a little bit better, tell some jokes, go back and forth, talk about his time moving from California, the city of Los Angeles, to Miami, Florida, 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 my home state. Here's that interview for you guys. Hope you enjoy. Guys, we love bringing on friends of the show. And today I have a great friend who's going to be on the show. Not only a friend of mine, but a friend of PragerU's, Dave Rubin. Hi. Amala, <laughs> I am a friend of everyone. Everyone here is so nice to me, it's ridiculous. Oh, that's it really fantastic. is ridiculous because, you know, I'm coming back yeah. after moving to the free state of Florida. Yes. And I was not happy today on the plane. I came in this morning, yeah. miserable being on the plane with the mask. And I got yelled at like 20 times. Oh, did you? And then I went downstairs at the airport and my mask was off and I wanted to get an iced coffee. The woman told me she wouldn't serve me an iced coffee if I didn't put my mask on. So I said, forget it. And I didn't oh, no. even, I wasn't even caffeinated when I got here. <laughs> but then I get here and everyone at PragerU, they hug me mm -hmm. and they're happy to see me and they smile and you yeah. see their teeth, yeah. which is unlike anywhere else in LA where everyone is just eternally miserable. 
There's but in Florida, sm- everyone's happy. A small oasis here in the city of Los Angeles for you. You guys uh, yeah. are doing something right around here. So are you one of those unruly airplane passengers that refuses to put the mask back on? Are you one of those I violent? Ev- I do the below the nose thing. Uh-huh. And she asked me like 10 times. They actually woke me up. She actually woke me up. Above your nose, sir. Above oh, your wow. Nose, sir. She said to the guy next to me, uh, do you want a $15,000 federal fine? It's like wow. three days ago, that old senile guy that's pretending to be president, what's his name again? Uh, <laughs> something. He, uh, he's in there hugging and kissing all these geriatric people. Yep. And we still have to wear masks like we're rodents in their little experiment. Uh, I don't rules like for it. The, rules um, for uh, the. I don't, I, like, I don't it. like it either. <laughs> I'll join you in that. Uh, today we're going to do something it's something pretty quick. We're going to do some rapid fire, 20 right. questions for rapid you. Rapid fire. Let's get your hot takes on this. Okay. Number one, Dave. Florida versus California. Florida. <laughs> Florida. Florida. Wow. Florida. Without hesitation yeah. whatsoever. Was there anything else you were going to add to that? <laughs> Florida. Florida. Do you miss anything about no. California? Well, you. I don't know. I miss you. Oh. No, I do miss like, like I miss a few of my friends that are here, you included. And, you know, I, I miss Dennis and I miss Marissa from PragerU, obviously. Right. But I don't miss anything else. No, literally nothing. You're oh, like, goodness. I had a great house. You've been to my house many times. I loved my house. But like a house is just a house. It's just a, it's just a structure. I miss nothing here. I'm so happy there. It's weird <sighs> because you forget when when right. you're in the thick of the weirdness and and the dystopia that that are some of these blue cities, mm-hmm. you forget that there are places that are not like that. And then you yeah. go to those places and you were just in Florida a couple weeks ago. Right. You go and you and suddenly you're it it it's reigniting like oh that thing that we forgot about. So Florida yeah. I miss nothing, and I'm leaving in five minutes. Gosh, you know, I moved here. You come with me. (laughs) I really should. I got an extra room. That's really my home base over there anyways. I moved to California. We'll talk off camera. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? We'll have a discussion about that. Uh, Next question. If you could pick a celebrity. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) If you could pick a celebrity to play you in a movie adaptation of your life, who would it be? Well, Denzel, obviously. Oh, it's like uncanny. uh, Yeah, it's got to be Denzel. Uh, (laughs) Well, this isn't an actor, but when I walked into the hotel today, uh-huh. uh, the guy behind the desk said, "Are you Brett Favre?" I swear to God, really? So he's not a he's not an actor, but I'll take it. I Brett would take Favre. that to the bank. Not bad, That's right? Not, no, you it's know, not a bad. Comparison. I could probably do a couple more push ups, but it's pretty good. <laughs> like little do you know. How about how about uh, Chris Pratt? How about Chris Pratt? I do get that every now. And Solid, and the and the values are in the line. Values are you know right. I could see him taking that up. Yes. What is the best thing happening in the conservative movement right now? Well, it's people like you. It really is. <laughs> Guys. It is people like you because so, I think something happened. Like, for real, something happened where in the last two years where the left went so bananas, like a dam broke. And I think the average person is now seeing people that are not what conservatives are supposed to look like. Right. And all that whole thing. Right. But I don't, I don't really mean it in terms of looks or even skin color or that thing. I mean it just in terms of, like, people, young people that are conservative are happier and, like, mm-hmm. more aware and not yep. crazy and that's good. And that is the best yeah. thing, I think, really. Man, there's so many people up for grabs right now in, in the political yeah. ideology market. <laughs> Let, let's collect them like Pokemon. Right. You know? <laughs> collect them all. Uh, Dave and I will be the nice, friendly faces that welcome you to our side of the aisle. Yeah. We're not so bad. <laughs> no, we're not. We don't bite either. Yeah. I mean, well, you, if you ask I don't know me what too, kind maybe. Of show this is. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask us to. <laughs> Uh, what's the worst thing happening in the conservative movement right now? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm. Um,. Well, I would say that the worst thing probably is that I think everyone's sort of struggling with how this alignment can work, right? So if you've got, say, the the ex-libs and you've got the libertarians and the more MAGA people and you've got, like, the religious conservatives, I'd say it's hard to wrangle all of these people together. It really is tough to do that. But that is the challenge. And by the way, it's happened before. I mean, when Reagan ran the first time, that was his job. Like, how do you take all of these people after Carter, who had so wrecked the country, and these people had all these different thoughts, all these different beliefs, how do you get them to just come together and be like, hey, that's the enemy. Let's figure it all out. Right. That's our challenge right now. But it ain't easy. It ain't easy. But by the way, that's yeah. a that's a nice problem to have. That actually. is a nice problem yeah. to have. I was going to say maybe something along the lines of I see a lot of conservatives who just like perfectly embody that evil caricature that people that- paint of us. And I'm just like, <laughs> Can you tone it down a little like bit? Like all the guys sitting around the table at, in The yeah. Simpsons, Mr. Burns, you know, yeah. when he gets the whole crew together as you the know? oil baron. And yeah, yeah. just get a little nicer. And we got him, guys. Yeah. But we're um, working on that. We're we are. That. We yeah. are. We're, we're the front runners on, on that movement there. Uh, yeah. Let's see. You have to pick a permanent co host uh, for you, with you in the Rubin Report. Are you going to pick wow. Joy Reid, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or Don Lemon? 
Oh my god. <laughs> Oh permanent they're God, not going anywhere tough. who you wrote this one you wrote this one yourself yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. we, we put you this guys together taylor this and i um i mean joy reed is completely insane like yeah. like off the charts you should be put in a place and doctors <laughs> should be provided to like really figure out what's going on there so yeah. that's joy reed okay aoc i just find her so absolutely repulsive okay. i really do i think she's the worst <laughs> sort of like um, entitled, you know what I mean? I really don't right. like entitled people. I like people who have success because they deserve it, not, sure. but not people who just, she just walked in and they gave her everything. Don Lemon, you know, believe it or not, Don and I used to be friends. Don and I used to go get wings uh -huh. on the Upper West Side and have beers and he was cool. And then unfortunately he just went woke and lost his mind. So if I yeah. really had to choose all of those three, you know what, watching Joy get tested by the doctors, <laughs> watching like the team of people come in and like go through the medication right. and be right. like lady we're up in this one I yeah. can do that I you're do only that. my co-host if you allow us to have a team of doctors on board yeah, as well that's it that is amazing that's pretty good joy hit him up let's roll joy <laughs> uh, that would be the same for joy behar by the way it's a joy thing oh yeah yeah, yeah. What did she man oh bananas and the name is just not it's not hitting there's no so joy in any of these women it, well the thing is I know she should be named Joy Less. That would make more sense. <laughs> but it's like, I don't want to make fun of Joy Behar because, you know, due to the uh, war in Ukraine, she is not able to go to yes. Italy. Oh and uh, so we should probably have a moment of silence. Same hey, tragedy, baby, yeah. what are we going to do? I'm going to get my pasta. <laughs> Sorry to all the Italians. I apologize for no, that that's, one. That's <laughs> when you do something in, in homage. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's be, not we cultural like appropriation. Be, yes, so we like the sauce. <laughs> it's okay. an appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the biggest threat to America's future right now? Great reset, the possibility of World War Three or the CCP? Oh, they're all the same thing in a way, oh, right? Like they're, yeah, I'm they're, so glad you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they're all kind of combined because the Great Reset is part of all of that. And mm -hmm. it's like it's sort of being pushed by China and World War Three. Like, look how quickly they just moved us off COVID. And now we're all obsessed right. with the war. Right. It's like they love fear, man. And they got everyone to fear their brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles for two years. Now they got us fear a nuclear war. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. Someone said that. Who oh was my that? There was, was that Jerry Seinfeld or somebody? I don't forget for who said that. Somebody <laughs> said that. But it's all, it's the same thing. It's all the same thing. Oh, trick question, Dave, and you yeah. passed. Thank you. You're, Thank this you. is flying colors. A++. Plus plus. Dave, what's your favorite conspiracy theory? Oh man! Well, by conspiracy theory, if you mean things that are now true, like, <laughs> let's, like, let's not let's not give you know that definition. Let's do actual conspiracy like actual, theory. Like actual aliens built the pyramids. Yeah, pigeons yeah. are you know, uh, government spies. Uh, you know, I do enjoy the ancient aliens mm -hmm. as much as the next guy. Um, there's a lot related to the pyramids and who built the pyramids. Right. You know, was it a bunch of Hebrews? I mean, I grew up on Long Island. These are not the most <laughs> physically the people build pyramids. Right, right. I'd say you know probably was it sphinxes that appeared from another planet brought here by the space lords mm -hmm. probably you know right right if it's anything like our conspiracy theories that'll come to be true in about yeah. two years <laughs> yeah exactly so just wait ladies and gentlemen misinformation <laughs> dave try as hard as you can to give a compliment to california <laughs> it once was good ah uh, is that a compliment yes it once was good <laughs> it has potential no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it once was good. There's nothing left. And and again, I, I just want to welcome you guys. If, if you want to come right. back with me, uh, I've got extra rooms. If you've got a room. You know I've got rooms. You know, I've got rooms. I, I might have to take you up on that. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. And I'm smoking these meats every day. Yeah. There's a lot going on over there. Sweet baby race. Yeah. Guys. Oh, yeah. yeah sweet baby race. <laughs> okay, Dave, try again. Give an insult to Florida. Ooh. Damn. Come on. Be careful. Um... An insult to Florida. An insult. Well, the people drive, at least in the Miami area, like crazy lunatics, which mm -hmm. I've come to like. So that's not fully. Okay, a, so you're signed so, you're But it's a little it. bit like you're in a video game, basically, because okay. everybody, you know, it's such an international city that everyone comes there with the traditions of where they came. Right. The, the driving, if you drove in Venezuela, you drive a certain way. You drove in Cuba, you drive a certain way. Everyone's right. flood, flooding from New York and California. And everyone's on their phone driving, yelling in Spanish, throwing coffee out the window. Mm. It's like, it's a thing. That's the I worst thing you it. can think of for Florida, it's Dave. pretty damn good. <laughs> come um, on now. <laughs> come on. The humidity uh, yeah, in yeah. the summer. The mosquitoes. Uh, Ah, I had one mosquito so far. One. You're just a lucky man. They, they just don't like you. <laughs> uh, Dave, what's your biggest worry about Gen Z? <sighs> like, is there enough 
of the good ones to get us out of this. Not good mm-hmm. ones, that's not the right word. Are, are there enough who will break free of this like mass mind control mm. that, that can free us? Because, you know, I'm a I'm Gen X. Right. I'm the I'm the forgotten generation, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm supposed to I'm forty five. My people are supposed to be in charge right now. They right. just skipped over us. We still have these old geriatric people. And I don't mean that like I don't like old people. I love the golden girls. I love old people. <laughs> and you can learn a lot from old people. Mm-hmm. But Joe Biden should not be president. Nancy Pelosi just announced her reelection. The woman is eight hundred years old. I mean, just Go be a grandma on. lady. Right. Like seriously, like what would what would be wrong with someone? Yeah. That at 80 something years old with all the money and power, go be a grandma. Wouldn't yeah. that be the, the the course of life you're supposed to take? And they won't do it. So I hope that there's enough Gen Z people and millennials and mm-hmm. what's after them. Then it's like, then we're just in meta. I don't even know. They're yeah, just yeah. meta people. They're, just metaverse They're people. not even real people <laughs> yeah. anymore. They're just like floating blobs. Yeah. I hope there's enough of them that can break out of the mind control. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, you know, people are saying that the Gen Z is more conservative than the millennials and that they're trying to I do hope that. So. I'm like, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. You guys have like 40 different pronouns. You're screaming at me for misgendering you and stuff. I don't know that you're really changing. We'll we'll figure out. You must pray. (laughs) I'm not even religious and I'm praying at this point, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dave, if you woke up as any other political commentator, who would you want to be? Oh, um, as any other political commentator. How about... uh, well, well, I guess a nice one would be Rachel Maddow because you could oh. never say anything remotely true and everyone will still love you for it. Oh my gosh. The whole machine will love you no matter how many times you say stupid things or right. you lie completely. But to sit there every day on camera and sound so, so perfectly like you know what you're saying and the CDC and, blah, and that you get everything wrong always and right. everyone loves you for it. There's something to be admired there. Yeah, it's like it's like a weatherman, but with actually yeah. <laughs> detrimental ideas. It's just great. And she yeah. is very, very confident, that woman. I mean, to just always look in the camera, because yeah. she's always looking directly in the camera. Yeah. She looks and she says this stuff, and the way she says it, it sounds like she knows what she's talking about, it, and she's wrong about everything. You gotta admire it. <sighs> you gotta admire it. You gotta admire it. You know, admire. Hey, hey, okay. <laughs> Audacity, gall, and confidence, ladies and gentlemen. That's really all you need to succeed in this world. And uh, the left has proven that to us. Gak. Yes. <laughs> All audacity, or, confidence. Uh, Dave and I are going to make merch. Or cat. <laughs> okay. uh, what is your favorite memory from your speaking tours? Do you have one? Oh, man. Well, I actually just wrote about it for my new book, which really, when I was on tour with Jordan and we were in mm-hmm. Dublin, Ireland, we walk out of the show. And, you know, when you do these big theaters, if you're performing, you can't walk out the main entrance because there's usually a lot of people there. So we walk out this side entrance. And it was late night. It was like 1 a.m. It was a really long day. And we see these two guys like down the way and it's dark, dark alley, like not in a particularly nice area of town. And we see these two guys and they start like kind of running towards us. And we were like, oh, my God, are they going to jump us? Mm-hmm. And it, it was a guy who was about 60 and the other guy was probably about 25, 30 or so. And they both were crying. And they told us that they were a father and son who had had a falling out about five years before, had not seen each other in five years. Oh, wow. They then read 12 Rules for Life, Jordan's book, came to the show independently of each other alone, Mm. saw each other at the show and came together. They were in tears, hugging, crying. Then Jordan started crying. His wife was there. She started crying. John, the tour manager, started crying. I, I was tearing up. I'm not, I'm not as emotional. He's like, I'm not a crier. (laughs) Come on. Um, But, but that moment, it was just like, it was such an embodiment of everything that Jordan was about. And to just be, to just be part of that, like, cause it wasn't political, you know, it wasn't like, Oh, I taught you to understand the marginal tax rate better. It was like, Holy like you're back with your family. Like that's pretty cool. That is so beautiful. Yeah. I bet you have just like thousands of those moments though throughout there, your There's career. a lot of them, but that was the one like, there were a lot of crying moments, a lot of like, mm-hmm. you know, people telling Jordan like, like literally they're off drugs, they got jobs, they, you know, married finally the girl that they had been abusing or, or whatever, right, like right, or right. neglecting, whatever right. it might be. And like, but that was the one where it was just like, man, the whole, the stars just lined yeah, up, right? That's, yeah, that's a movie scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one thing you don't need, Dave, is truth serum. But if you had one vial of it, who would you give it to? <laughs> um, you got your Hillary Clintons. You got your Ghislaine Maxwells. <sighs> Hillary's the easy answer because it's mm-hmm. like, it's like, what are, what have you really yeah, like, done, lady? Like, how many people have you killed and what happened? Your, oh, yeah. what, what's his name? White Hall or whatever his name was. Yeah. The guy that died in jail and all that kind of stuff. Um, I guess 
You know what I'd like? Uh, this is going to sound a little corny, I guess, mm-hmm. but if you gave it to Bernie, it's like, dude, mm-hmm. do you believe any of this socialist nonsense? Mm-hmm. Like, I actually do think he's a believer, but I'd right. really like to know. Like most of them, like AOC, I think just wants power. Mm-hmm. She, she's not a real believer. She would say anything on the quest for fame and to wear nice dresses and that sure. kind of stuff. Right. But Bernie, you do strike me as a true believer, but are you so dumb a- 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 yeah. after all this time, 80 years on this planet, your answer was socialism, the thing that has never worked. You right. really still think that if you just had more of our tax money, we you just, could make it work. Yeah, we just need I to do it right. I really believe in the thing you yeah. do. If we just call the World Economic Forum. We'll yeah. Just, let's just get their powers together. It'll make it work. I promise. <laughs> were you ever like a, a, a Bernie bro? Yeah. You were, I was, you were I was super a, new. I was, there are literally videos of me on YouTube supporting Bernie Sanders oh, in 2015. Yeah. That's not even that long time ago. We've come a long way. Come a long way. You've <laughs> come a long way. Okay. Well, speaking of that, if you had to visit your old leftist self, but yeah. you only had the capability to say one sentence to them, what would you say? Can I curse on this program? Go for it. What the f- is wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You I know, it was like, just be... like, come on. Like, come <laughs> on. What are you doing? Like, argh. You know, I thought it was going to be something profound and meaningful, but I think that no, is think profound that, and meaningful. Yeah, in its own really, way. Yeah. yeah. Come on. That might just do the trick. Yeah, that would be you. it. You're like, what is this? What is this sharp man? Looking at because me, otherwise you know? it's <laughs> like, you know, what? A, okay, no, you should understand this more. You're going to, no, no, no. Just be like. I got to whack you in the head right. and, and let's get moving here. That might do the trick. I wish yeah. I could do that to my old 17 year old self. If but only. look, you, you at least did your transition as the kids say, right? You did it earlier than me. So you're ahead of the game. Sister. Yeah. We yeah. want all the kids to transition. Yeah. <laughs> We're very <laughs> pro train. If you kids are listening, <laughs> make nobody sure you tell that. your parents you're coming home and transition. <laughs> Please. Nobody clip Edit that. that. Uh, <laughs> almost done here. What is your biggest guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure, guilty. You know, I don't feel a lot of guilt, like, as a person. I'm not, like, a guilty. I don't Mm -hmm. feel guilt. Um, You know, I do have a little uh, glaucoma, and uh, occasionally I have to uh, take something so that I can see a little more clearly. Usually just (laughs) while I'm laying on the couch before bed, probably once a week for the glaucoma. Glaucoma, thank you. Uh, glaucoma is a serious issue and it affects millions across America. Millions across America. Yeah, you know, no one's safe. then eat cookies <laughs> and go to bed. <laughs> okay, speaking of, you know, watching TV, getting ready for bed, uh, what is a TV show that you could take a college course on and get an A across Oh, Seinfeld, the board? Seinfeld for sure. Okay. Like, I could do every episode, almost every line, every character. Sometimes if it's like, I'm just wandering, walking with my dog, and I'm like thinking about an episode of Side, but it was just perfect. It was absolutely the perfect comedy. Amazing. Here's what I thought you were gonna say. Golden Girls. And who is your favorite Golden Girl Dave? Okay, so so Golden Girls Oh, so wait, was your question if I had to if I could only watch one thing for the rest well, of the Well, if life? you're gonna take a, a college course on a TV show and get an A across the board, is, is Seinfeld that show? You know what? I will amend my answer. Okay. If it was about if it was about graduating number one in a class, like nobody could get me on anything, mm-hmm. it's Golden Girls. Okay. For sure. It's absolutely Golden Girls. <laughs> awesome. Because because also uh, there's a gajillion people that know everything about Seinfeld, like mm-hmm. what color his socks were on that episode. I'm right. not like that level of crazy. Golden Girls, yeah, I've seen everyone in a bajillion times. Uh huh. Seinfeld to me is sort of the perfect comedy because it's just perfect seasons one through nine. It's absolutely perfect along the way. The Golden Girls got stronger and stronger and stronger. And I would say in season seven, which was its last season, was mm. as good as it had ever been. The last episode is I could do this all day long. I'm getting a lesson see. here. This is yeah. great. Who's my favorite Golden Girl? Uh-huh. Uh, it's definitely Dorothy, played mm-hmm. by the wonderful B. Arthur, who describes herself in one episode as a classical liberal, by the way. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. That is amazing. Last question here, Dave. Uh, who is the best up and coming female conservative influencer below the age of 22? Wow. <laughs> um, you know, these that, that turning point crew, they've got a lot of, a lot of chicks over there. Uh, boy, I don't know any of their names. They all look the same. Um, <laughs> so I'd have to go with- Never heard uh, truer words. Uh, there was that some- I saw some girl with she had funky Maybe hair, a Bethany, a Sarah. Kind of very smile. Yeah, 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 definitely Tara. Totally get it. Uh, Completely you know, agree. She was something <laughs> Bethany, <laughs> Bethany or Tara. It's Bethany Tara. Actually. It's Bethany Tara. Fantastic. Yeah, she's great. Shout girl. out to you, Bethany. At Bethany Tara on Instagram. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that concludes our questions, Dave. I'm going to Florida <laughs> now. Goodbye. <laughs> and I wish I was going with him. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, and we'll be back with more. Awesome. Dave's a, a very good friend. I uh, always love having him on the show, and he's always a fun person to interview. And we were saying this behind the scenes. He always has so much to say. You could ask Dave about anything, and he is just immediately on the ball, has his opinion, throws it out there, and just so, so clean. So, Dave, thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, now, let's get into some conservative controversy that happened today. Worst thing to ever happen. One yeah, this is the worst thing that's this is ever a happened. <laughs> this is a bombshell. We should have called James O'Keefe, but we did not have time. We had to air this on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> there has been a massive piece of theft within the conservative uh. movement. A uh, theft of content. This is Taylor Trandall's, our Taylor Trandall's tweet. Oh, no. That he put out. Gas, gas is now officially more expensive than the movie I Am Legend imagined it would be during the apocalypse. It is true. It's like, what an astute observation. Astute observation with yeah. photographic evidence. Exactly. Nonetheless. And multiple accounts <laughs> on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram stole this tweet and cropped out Taylor's name. <laughs> <laughs> Including Will Witt. Including I did, Will I did Witt. it too. I joined the party. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was yeah, quite If you go to Will's story right now on Instagram, it's got my tweet. With my name cropped out on there. So I had to personally go yeah. through and crop your name out <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> it's hilarious because everybody's posting it and it's getting like hundreds of thousands of likes. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally going, at least uh, someone, Zero Hedge, found it on Twitter, on my Twitter, and uh -huh. retweeted it. So at least I'm getting some tweet traction. But yeah, I've got like a few hundred likes on it. And then I saw it today, Sabrina from our team, who runs Breaker Force, uh, showed mm -hmm. me that uh, the typical liberal account on Instagram posted it and it's got like 150. 50,000 likes right now or something um, and then come to find out that they discovered it through former PragerU employee uh, Mike Lavery. Wow, Mike. Right? How dare you? Mike, I think you're just doing your due diligence. <laughs> yeah, no, but he, he didn't know it was from me either. He saw it from some TikTok account. So I don't know how many layers deep the theft and thievery goes, but this is a serious problem. And I think we should launch a right. full investigation. Goes all the way to the 33rd level of the Freemasons, I'm sure. <laughs> they, they knew all about this. This was definitely a World Economic Forum is behind yeah, right. this in some Klaus way. Klaus Schwab. Oh, this is a great <laughs> meme. Yeah. It'd be a just, shame if somebody stole it. <laughs> It's just, you know, but look, I mean, I'm a viral influencer now, so I'm, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm happy to have you guys on, on my show um, anytime you want. And if you want any tips on social media, how to go viral, Amala, I know you're struggling yeah. with that. Always. Um, and it, I know and like you might get to the point where people are stealing your content and, you know, now that I'm uh, experiencing all that, it's just really tough. But if you guys ever need, if that ever right. happens to you, um, I'm somewhere you can go to, you know. Get encouraged. Taylor got recognized at the movie theater over the weekend. <laughs> that also did. <laughs> wow, what is happening right now? <laughs> oh, We're spotlighting man. you today. I yeah. guess so. His life is changing. You yeah, know, the, the content <clears throat> thieves are coming. The fans are coming. Just, uh, this, Taylor's this world fame is... is just, it's, it's a game changer, man. <laughs> just don't let it get to your head, Taylor. No, just no, really I mean, don't. My yeah. head, as long as my head inflates slower than inflation, we should be okay. Exactly, which well, is at all time. That's high. still pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, it's still Gas pretty prices, fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Your your photo, what, what's it, 675 for gas in that photo? Insane. Yeah, yeah that's from Were LA. you watching I Am Legend, or who did you steal that from? No, yeah, I, I watched, uh, that's one of my favorite movies, uh -huh. and I remember watching it, like, uh -huh. year, like, way back when, and I remembered seeing him pump the gas and being like, oh, wow, they, they had it over at over $6 a gallon. And then I saw a picture on social media, the one that I posted, um, of the actual gas prices, and I was that was going around, you know, everyone's posting these pictures right now, and I was like, right. I wonder if it's higher. And then I went back and looked, and sure enough, it was. And uh, so, that's yeah, actually that's insane, though. It actually is an astute observation that it is higher than Thank apocalyptic you, gas prices. <laughs> Literally <laughs> during the zomb a, a zombie invasion, during a zombie invasion, our economy would be doing better <laughs> than it actually is right now. Right. Under what's currently happening. Right. <laughs> I hope you didn't steal it, Taylor. I hope you made this up yourself. I didn't Taylor steal it. Taylor did make this up himself. And a lollygag in the comments says he's married, ladies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on. I know. All the lady. Once you start getting viral tweets, they're just all over. DMs are closed. Yeah. Sorry. It's really true. Yeah, exactly. I will have your children. I guess. You know, oh, you know, every girl in their Tinder profile is putting like, I want someone who can tweet viral tweets. Yeah. It's definitely. Yeah. And get them stolen. Every girl's dream. <laughs> Yeah. Oh Listen, my if, gosh. If, every time 
I mean, the amount of times that my content gets stolen is just insane with <clears throat> my man on the street videos. I mean, the sounds of it, the video oh, yeah. cut up. I mean, it's it's rampant. There's nothing you can do. It's just that's just the nature of what it is, Taylor. It so really is. You just got to get used to it. Join the club. Well, wow. get in the boat, Taylor. Yeah, I'll make like a reel or something or we'll make a reel. And then some random person will just make a video where they're reacting to it with like crazy faces. And it goes more viral than the original <laughs> video. I know. I know. It's like, oh, my face wasn't good enough. Uh huh. I had a video. You gotta put someone else's face on it now. It's crazy. I made a video about CRT, and this guy like responded to it and just went, "Mm hmm, mm hmm, preach it, girl." And it got way like thousands more <laughs> likes than the I video it's crazy. that I made. But listen, listen. As you guys know, this is about. It's not about me. All right. It's about the movement. Yeah. That's right. Okay. You know, I'm right. just happy to hope that in some small way. I told Will before this. This. this Selfless uh, act. Yeah. During the break, I told Will, you know, St. Paul the Apostle said, whether it's through false motives or pure, I'm just happy that the gospel's being preached. Right. So I'm just glad the word's getting out. You right. know what I'm saying? But also, so glad this I Am Legend tweet. <laughs> it's, it's a game changer, It's for changer, the movement. Guys. It's for the movement. Right. It really is. Right. No, conservatism will never be the same after oh, yeah. this day. This, neither will gas prices, apparently. It's right. It's tragic. And neither will your money. And yeah. what's so important about your money anyway? It's important because it's disappearing because of this economy. Right. Am I right? And so You're we, right, Will. And so we met, or I met. I know how right you are. <laughs> yeah. So I did a short interview with uh, uh, Mr. Kiyosaki, who wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I want you guys all to watch this interview. All right, we are joined with Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, financial expert, amazing all-around guy. Been on your show. Now I have you on my show. It's I'm fantastic. Right. And so just have time for one really quick question. When you're seeing America right now, the economy, inflation, I mean, you got the, the stock market looking like it's about to crash. Real estate isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Bitcoin's crashing. I mean, you're seeing a lot of things happening right now where people are very worried about their money. What do you think is the average American who might be watching the show what should they do with their money, and what do you see as the, the future of America's economy? Well, I say to the young people like you, you guys are screwed. You know, I say that because I'm an old guy. I'm a baby boomer. Boomers had the easiest time. Any, what, in 1944, we had a Bretton Woods conference. It made life so easy for the boomers, except that we messed it up. So your generation now is screwed. So that's why I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad and all this is because you got to get f f uh, smarter with your money. This 401k is going to wipe out my generation. All the boomers, oh, I have a 401k. I said, yeah, what happens when the stock, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if it happens, and if your 401k tanks when you're 65 years old, you're up the creek without a paddle. Yeah. So that's why I said is your financial education. On the good news, if you're financially educated, Crashes are the best times to get rich. Mm -hmm. so, I can't wait for a crash. Right. So I'm going to get richer and richer and richer, even if it crashes. But it takes financial education. Right. So what do you think people should do? Like a normal person who's watching this, what would you say is like their first step right now? Well, the first step is read, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And uh, my other thing is my cash flow board game. Uh, Maria Montessori, the Montessori school system, great system. She says, uh, what the hand does, the mind remembers. So the trouble with going to lectures is you don't remember much. But if you're playing games, your, your mind is actively engaged with your body. So I learned everything playing Monopoly when I was nine years old. So today I have hotels, I have 10,000 rental properties, and I'm financed it all with debt. And everybody goes, what? And you know, people think debt is a four letter word, and it is for most people. But the reason I like real estate is when the economy gets really bad, the bankers want to give you money because that's how money is created. Mm -hmm. Money is created via debt. And so that's why when I go to my banker all the time, I'm going, can I borrow more money? They go, thank you, thank you, thank you. They're happy because if they don't lend money, the bank doesn't make money. Yeah. But it's opposite of what you're taught in school. You know, live right. debt free. For, yeah, most people, model. for most people, that's good advice. You should live debt free. But for somebody like me, I'm proud to say I'm a billion dollars in debt. Now it takes financial genius to handle 10 uh, billion dollars of debt. Right. And that debt is making me a very rich man. But I study constantly. Right. I took real estate, I take real estate courses today. Yeah. My, one of my best friends is Ken McElroy. Mm -hmm. He wrote the book, The ABCs of Real Estate. It's a rich dad book. I'd get that book because he's my partner. 
So you want to learn from real people who are doing real things. Don't learn from real estate agents. Real no. estate agents only care if they sell you something. Yeah. Let me ask you one more question. I know they're going to get mad at me, yeah. but I, I, I got to ask you. Because you're talking about going into debt. And right now we're seeing America. America is into debt. And I don't think that that's the same type of deal where their debt is actually good. I mean, we're having this quantitative easing from the Fed that is just seems to be ruining this economy. We know why the Fed was created. We know what it's done. I mean, what is the financial situation for America in general? How does America get out of this crisis? I mean, to me, it seems like there's going to have to be some tipping point. And once that tipping point comes, then we can you know, rebuild. But it, it seems like it's getting to that point. Yeah, but you know the problem. You see this... <clears throat> Ron Paul, the senator, you know, he mm -hmm. says, and the Fed. They mm -hmm. should. The Fed is a criminal organization, as far as I'm concerned, because it only bailed out the rich. Now, the good news made me rich. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, it just gets smarter. That's why I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I have the cash flow board game, because when times are bad, it's really the best time to get rich. Yeah. It, it, it's counterintuitive. You know, all coins have three sides, heads, tails, and the edge. Intelligence is standing on the edge. The next crash is going to make me even richer. If you understand that, then you'll say, well, what does he know? Right. That's why I bought Rich Dad, Poor Dad, all my other books. My friend Ken McElroy, if you like real estate, he's the smartest guy I know. He's my partner. You know, I'm a billion dollars in debt because of him. But most people are taught to get out of debt, like Dave Ramsey says, live debt free. Well, that's good for most people. It's good advice. But not for somebody like me. I'm a capitalist. Right. I like making money. Right. For everyone out there, get a billion dollars in debt. We're going to do this together. It's opposite of what everybody tells you. Yeah. But don't do it because I said it. You got to go practice. Okay. Right. Don't go buy some TV and get into debt. Do something. Do something <laughs> yeah. real. I mean. Yeah. Mr. Kiyosaki, thank you so much for coming you. on the show. Keep up the good work. You Will know? do. Keep keep your edu your generation is really screwed. Yes. My generation screwed you guys. Yeah. Well, so if you know that. I'm trying to fix your mistakes. <laughs> no, get rich. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. A very motivational message on that one. We're all screwed and we're all going to die. <laughs> Thank you for doing what you're doing. Also, you're screwed. <laughs> I, at least he's honest, you know? Uh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, he was honest. And one thing that I was reading about today when it comes to the economy that I don't think many people are talking about that, you know, we're talking about oil prices. I mean, in just about a week and a half, crude oil went from $90 a barrel to now it's at a close to $130 a barrel. That's up $40 in about two weeks. Absolutely insane. You're going to be seeing it at the pump. Next, the thing that we're, no one is really talking about that I think is going to be even more huge, if not just as huge, is the cost of food fertilizer. So we get a lot of our fertilizer from Russia, actually, for our food, for our crops, for fertilizing our crops. And what's going to happen is that the price of that fertilizer is going way up. And so what you're going to see is that actually going to the grocery store, buying food from restaurants, all of those types of things, wholesale for if you own a restaurant or business, is going to be going way up as well. So this isn't just a, an oil problem or getting gas to pump your car. It's going to be a problem for you to be able to feed your family. And that's what's so scary about this this war that these people are trying to drag us into right now with Ukraine. It, it, it's They're doing it the wrong way. They're doing it all the wrong way. And they're, they are sacrificing the American people's well-being at the pump, at the grocery store, at a restaurant for their own warmongering. So just be prepared. That, that things are going to continue to get more expensive, not just not just at the gas pump, but also at the grocery store, and do your best to prepare yourself for all of these things. But don't fret, because what was it? Uh, Bill Gates owns the most farmland in America. Right. So he's going to fix it You could just us. eat Everything bugs. going to be fine. <laughs> but McBug. McBugs. McBug. McSoylent. Yeah, we all love a McBug. Yum. Delicious. I cannot wait for that to be my future. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for Taylor to tweet about it and go viral. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll think of a good McBug tweet and get back to you. <laughs> the bugs and I am legend are just like just the me. bugs today. <laughs> Seem familiar? The bugs from the movie The Mummy were too big to be save the economy. I don't know. We'll, right. we'll work on it. We'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll workshop we'll it, guys. Find steal it from and then yeah. get it. To exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Now, let's get into Dear Will and Amal. You guys submitted your advice questions to my Instagram, <laughs> at the Amal Epinobi. You can follow Will at the Will Wit. You can follow Taylor at Taylor Trandall. But don't worry, everybody's already got that covered. We're already all following Taylor. So. Yeah, don't have to tell them twice. <laughs> you don't have to worry You'll about see my that. stuff anyway, so even if you don't follow me, it's fine. Everyone else will post it. <laughs> Oh, it's should've so been the title funny. Of the show. It really should have been the title. Taylor tweets stolen. <laughs> yeah. What? Thumbnail. 
Oh, man. Amazing. Okay. This first one is from Erica underscore three, two, three. She says, I've never really been into politics, but you caught my attention. Where should one start to learn? Mm. Interesting question. It's a woman? Yes. Does that matter? <laughs> yes. Okay. Why? <laughs> well, Please do tell. Depends on what type of politics you're trying to get into. Mm -hmm. That's important. Because just getting into politics, I don't think is 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 so important for the average person. If you're just thinking of like, if you want to know about, I don't know, what Joe Biden's doing or something or what has mm -hmm. happening in the White House or in Congress, it's like you're wasting your time, in my opinion. So I think that if you're talking about politics in the sense of information and values and those types of things, obviously PragerU is the number one resource to go. Start here, um, baby girl. Daily Wire is also great. Um, there's a lot of great uh, other organizations who are pushing out really great mm -hmm. material. You have uh, Heritage for some things, not everything, but Heritage for some things. Um, so lots of organizations like that and lots of different news sources. Contra, uh, Jordan Chatel on Substack. There are a lot of great people. So it just depends on what type of politics you're trying to get into. Yeah. Uh, my view on this, at least if you're like just getting into what's happening, look at what affects you the most. And for, for me uh, and for most people, that's local politics. If you have children, look at your school board and see what's going there, what's happening there. Your, your, the election of your, your sheriff, all of your county supervisors and all that stuff. That's going to be the stuff that affects you the most uh, and affects your daily lifestyle the most. So if I was going to get into politics, I would look at what's affecting me on a day-to-day -day basis and what truly is changing the way that I live in whatever city that I'm in. So that is where I would start to learn and check things out. Yeah, I think it's important to know the history and the values before you start going into the mm -hmm. politics. Because mm -hmm. people who just go right into politics and don't know anything about the history of this country or anything about the values that, that made too. this country or just like what the ideas actually are. Like that's why I wrote my book, my book, How to Win Friends and Influence Enemies, because all the ideas are not like, oh, here's talking about, you know, Congress or administration. It's talking about different viewpoints and ideas that you can then learn about and ask questions about. Uh, and I think that that's wh where you need to start. Because right. then you can look at every issue independently and be yep. able to judge it accordingly yep. instead of just being reactionary to mm -hmm. whatever some stupid congressman is doing, right? Like it's, it's more important to be informed with good values and and everything like that than just blindly follow the hill you know yeah that's good advice <clears throat> yeah have you guys seen that meme going around recently I, th I think you showed it to me that it's like i support the current thing and yes. it's like this person who's got like the trans flag behind them and three vaccine things going into yeah. them and now they've yeah. got the ukraine flag and it's just like just following along with whatever's going on you're much more easily manipulable when you're you, when you look at politics just through that lens of like the shallow, like what's going on, whenever you actually know your values, what you believe about the world, because ultimately, yeah, what your deepest held uh, beliefs uh, are going to manifest themselves in your politics and whether or not you realize it, what you're seeing on TV is it's it's preaching at you a way to see the world, a worldview. It's formulating something. And if you're not deliberate and looking directly at what the, your values and what is most important, what yeah. your foundation is, and building that firmly on sound things, then it's you're just going to piecemeal it together based on all these messages that you're seeing on social media and in the media. And that's the, that's ultimately a very like shallow and easily manipulated uh, way of engaging with the world. And you don't want to be that. And that's precisely what we try to do the opposite of here. And like even it was different. It was interesting because this show is one of the only things that PragerU does that speaks to current issues. Mm -hmm. But the reason is, is because we try to take what's going on and connect them to those deeper things and not just give a yet another, you know, viral reaction or viral tweet on some, you know, trending right. topic. I and mean, we'd right. never do something like that. Political yeah, ideology yeah. is used as a tool by the elite and the bureaucracy to control the masses of people who don't know how to critically think. That's what they use it for. And they understand that. So until you know how to critically think, I don't think anyone should be worried about politics. It's like if you if you don't know what's going on, then you shouldn't vote either. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't go and vote yep. if you have no idea what's going on or don't have good values because you're going and voting and you are an uninformed voter. So uh, it, it, you really have to work on the things that matter above politics first and then you can get into politics. You know, that's like what's wrong with so much of our political system now when it comes to like influencers and, and political talking and messages from people because these people are only worried about these like minute political things and that's what's driving the, the conversation. And so on both sides of the aisle, you just have people who are just washed out messaging that doesn't really get us anywhere. So, yeah, I think it's it's a values problem.
get into the values and then focus that into a, a, a funnel to then shape the politics. Great answer. Yeah. Uh, next one. Dear Will and Amala from erm.nio. I'm a PhD student and my boyfriend and I have been together for a long time. Oh, Will's going to love this question. He wants to get married soon, but I would rather wait till I'm done. I have three years left to go, then get married. What do you think I should do? Wait, so it's the girl who wants to get married? The girl's the boyfriend wants to get married. She's a PhD student. She has three years left in her PhD and she wants to wait till she's done with that. Why wait? I, uh, I'm why, confused. Why would you wait? I'm confused as well. What what does the I don't understand what the PhD has to do with being married. There's always something. There's always like, oh, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready because of that. Whatever. It's just do it. You're gonna be. I, I I think that you will be happier and better off if you just just pull the trigger and and get it done. I think that you will be. You know. I I think that as Dennis Prager talks about, where he's like, there's always a million reasons not to, but once you do it, it's it's always for the best. And if it, you and want people to, should do it. If you yeah. want to. Yeah. yeah. I Think about, analyze why you think getting your PhD over the next three years. Three years is a long time, too. It's a long Be time. like, honey, I'll marry you. Just wait three years. Right. Yeah. Analyze why you think the PhD is more important to get done, because I have a feeling, and this is speculation, that there's something underlying here that makes you not want to be married. Yeah. Um, Maybe because she's not giving us the full picture. Yeah. I doubt it's, I doubt it's just the PhD, because there's really nothing that you're doing while doing a PhD that stops you from marrying someone. Right. But again, it's yeah. like it's like the, the the modern way people think about these kinds of things. They're like, oh, I can't get married until I'm completely financially stable. I can't get married until uh, I finish my PhD. I can't get married until I have this place in my career or whatever. But it's like, you know, this person who you're going to marry and be with is now your life partner. This is not just a girlfriend or boyfriend. This person is going right. to be supporting you <clears throat> through all those things. And also, if you guys move in together, then you're you're paying half rent now. That's you true. know, so you're saving even more money. So, you know. I, I, I say just just pull a Nike. Just do it. Yeah. You know, I think it's better for you. If you want it. Yes. Yeah. In the chat, Alfie said, just kiss him. Just kiss him. <laughs> just kiss him. And then you'll Definitely know. a regular Thank watcher you. to yes. know that. Thank you, Alfie. I'm yeah. <coughs> Taylor, any insight before we... Oh, no, that was my insight. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I agree with you guys. If, if, you know, if you intend to marry him, then don't wait three years. If yeah. you're the jury's still out and you're not sure, then that's a different conversation. Right. right. Yeah. We're I'm going based off of the out. information that we have. Right. Exactly. And based off the information I have, I stick with my answer. Same here. Next. Perfect. Uh, how to stay energized when life is exhausting at Daisy E. Hake. I'll answer like Dennis again. Mm -hmm. Um, Dennis Prager wrote a whole book about this. Happiness is a serious problem. I recommend everyone read it if you haven't read it. But in this book, Dennis talks about happiness is not just, you know, something that, that just comes. Happiness is a choice. Mm -hmm. You choose to be happy in your life. You know, there's all sorts of horrible things that happen to you, to us, to everyone. And you have to make the, the conscious effort and decision to be happy. And I think that it's the same when it comes to being energized, right? You have to make the decision to be energized. I, I, listen, I'm tired all the time. Okay. I'm tired all the time. Everyone's tired all the time. We all have stuff that we deal with, but... You know, when you have a job to do or you have something important, you 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 suck it up and you just do it, right? There's, you, you have to make that choice. And if you don't can't make that choice, then you're sucks for you, I guess. I, you just have to make that choice and just be that energized, happy person and choose to be like that. Yeah, I think happiness in a, in a lot of ways is definitely choice and you can wake up and, you know, deal with the consequences and things that you can or cannot control and you can choose to have a positive outlook on it, on it and find a silver lining in it. And also you should be moving towards a life that shapes your happiness in that, uh, you know, you feel fulfilled in and, and present in and and you can do so by going through hard things that you don't want to do. Uh, and a lot of us have to do that. Uh, and you know, you get through that with the knowledge and with the the idea in mind that I'm doing this to work towards something greater and that my life is going to get greater after this small blip or whatever's going on. And this might be exhausting and hard to put the work in, but I'm working towards something else. And, you know, you're you're only in the moment that you're in. So mm. choose to be choose to be happy in it and, and accept the positive things about where you're at. Yeah. I, per I, I personally feel the most energized when I'm not when I'm the most tired, but when I have the most to do. Mm. Like if I have so many things coming, like when my book came out and it was nonstop work, work, work all the time and book tour and all this kind of stuff, it was 
excuse me, it was exhausting, but I felt the most energized going right. through everything and doing it, right? I felt on top of the world. So I think that people who don't always feel energized, maybe they need to find more things to do as well. Find more things to do. There's always something you can do to improve your life or improve the life of someone you love, uh, all sorts of stuff. So find more to do, and I think you'll be energized that way. That's good. Uh, I would also say, uh, you want to go, Taylor? No, I mean, okay. after you. <laughs> um, so often we can use our mind to put ourselves in sort of these depressis, uh, depressive or anxiety-ridden states. It's mainly your mind. And if you really think or you just sit there and just breathe and think about it, the only thing that's making you anxious and depressed is your own thoughts. It's not anything that's truly happening to you in that very moment. It's your mind's reaction to it. And if you can learn to control that and to uh, control your, your sort of inner thought and your inner thinking to towards situations, so much of your anxiety and depression is going to be alleviated through that. And it's something that people don't realize that, you know, <clears throat> we view anxiety and depression as outer forces that are working on us, but really they're inner forces in your own brain, convincing you to feel that way and convincing you to be stressed. And a lot of that is attached to time, whether it be having too much or not having enough or, you know, creating this timeline in our brain of what we should be doing and where we should be at. All of that is your own thoughts. Nobody's pushing that on you. There is no external force that's making you feel that way. It's your own brain. So you have to learn how to control those thoughts and, and redirect. Also, it should be mentioned that this also does come down to diet as well. That if you're eating crummy food, a lot of sugar, a lot of seed oils, a lot of things that are not good for you, you are also going to have less energy. If you want to have more energy, just naturally... Mm -hmm. Eat better foods. Eat foods with one ingredient. Eat 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 things that are 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 clean. You know, you'll feel a lot better. If you want to, like, just imagine, like, what happens when you go and eat a whole Burger King Whopper versus a burger that you made at home yourself with good ingredients. You feel so right. much better, right? So your your food and diet does have a lot to do with it as well. Eat well, exercise. Yeah, Taylor. <laughs> Okay, so I've been annoying you guys about, I've been watching that Kanye documentary, mm -hmm. um, and there was, I watched the, the last part of it over the weekend, and it was interesting that the way this question is phrased is about being energized, because uh, he was on, he was like taking a call from some guy who was going to come out and help him with an album or something, he's like, okay, he was like signing off, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm really excited, and Kanye stopped him, and he goes, like, hold on, I don't, he's like, we're trained to like be all hyped up and be excited in our culture and this and that. And he's like, you need to say energized. I, I'm tired of saying excited. Dude. Like I, I want to do things that energize me. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, it just, and it kind of shed light on like what made part of what made him different is that the projects and the things that he focused on everything from like through the wire, which tells a story of like his car crash and how he overcame it and what it meant to him to like stuff he did with his mom to like Jesus is King later. He does things that he believes in and his yeah. heart and soul are in. And he, he, he does them because he believes the world needs them and yeah. that's what motivates him and i think all of us need to be energized by the things that we do and if, if mm -hmm. you're if, if you have it's a different problem of just like if, if you don't have a reason to get out of bed in the morning then of course you're not going to like right. you know feel energized to to to, about your life, but you need to figure out what it, what matters and what do you have off to offer the world? What has God put inside you? What talents, what gifts, what passions? And then well, what does the world need? And you go out there and go after it. And, you, and it's a belief that you have something to offer, but a belief that, you know, the world needs something. And you you are the bridge between those two things. And that's ultimately like what what where you have to place yourself. And that's motivating when you believe yeah. that I have something unique that no one else can bring to the table out there and the world needs it. Um, then that you'll be energized when you work from that point. That's like what Will was saying. Like when I have a lot to do, when I'm engaged in my purpose and what I'm doing, I'm energized, even though it's like exhausting to work. It's mm -hmm. like, I believe in what I'm doing. I believe the world needs it. And uh, I believe this is my time and you are just going after it. And so, uh, I think y'all are both right. Right. And a lot of people will view that and be like, Oh, well, I don't like the job right now that I'm doing or I'm not passionate about it. I need to quit and I need to move on and I need to do something good and like do something unique and not everybody's going to have that experience. I think it's also important to recognize that you can bring that uniqueness and you can bring yourself into things that are yes. not conventional uh, and into jobs that you might not be super passionate about and you can go, you know, this is something that I do every day that I'm not super passionate about and I can, you can actively work outside of there to move to something different but also bring that passion and uniqueness to something that you're not used to doing or that you, you might not even enjoy doing and say, you know, that's a powerful thing to face the adversity of you know doing something maybe you're not so passionate about but doing it so well and in a way that's unique to you that makes it feel good uh so yeah, yeah and also really just part, that's a great point Amla and just going off that a little bit like you can be energized by 
hustling in a part of your life that you're like, maybe I'm not passionate about being it. Like when I was in school, I was not passionate about doing my, my homework or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, I knew that I had to get good grades in order to position myself to, to on the path that is going to make me uh, connect me to my purpose and to position me to do what I am believing in. So in that way, it's connected to it. And so I can still funnel that passion into uh, the things that are mundane yeah. uh, because I, it's all about positioning yourself in the bigger picture. And I, I think right. people get bogged down and short sighted and like, oh, well, I'm doing this. It's like, no, well, maybe you need to either reposition yourself or if this is something you have to do, then put that energy into it. Yep. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. Depending on what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Always depending on what it is. Every every situation is going to be unique. Um, guys, I think that's our show for today. Oh, that's a good way to end out. Yeah, we're we're about to hit 2.30. (laughs) (laughs) I know. It's like, uh, it seems like a powerful place to end it. You're feeling energized and fulfilled in the things that you do. Uh, Guys, let us know down below, what was your favorite part of today's show? Was it the interview with Dave Rubin? Was it Robert Kiyosaki? Was it Dear Will and Amala? Was it Will educating you on inflation and our economy? Or Taylor getting his tweet stolen. Or Taylor getting his tweet that stolen. That was my favorite That's part. my favorite part Leave down day. below what your favorite tweet that you saw today was <laughs> and who wrote it. <laughs> Credit <laughs> unknown. <laughs> everyone, if you're watching and you have Twitter, everyone, go take Taylor's tweet, crop it. That'd be hilarious. And post it. Please do, guys. <clears throat> and sure, tag. why not? And tag all sorts of other accounts. Just tag <laughs> random accounts on it. Just Say credit to, to Amala. Yeah. Just, just get the message out, guys. That's all that matters. Yeah, it's all yeah. that matters just to, to, to poor old movement. Taylor. <laughs> Selfless. <laughs> Hop to it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single day when we go live. And give this stream a like since, you know, we're not streaming on Will and Amala for the week. Hopefully we get that all fixed up. But, you know. Big Tech hates us, so let's see how quickly that happens. Again, leave a comment down below. What was your favorite part of today's show? We will be back tomorrow with Hot Topics, plus it's TikTok Tuesday. So we will see you then, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern.